In this video, I want to go ahead and start making our path down with attachments. So what we're going to be doing specifically in this video is we're going to be swapping over our tutorial M4, that is the complete firearm, and we're going to be swapping it with the no add-ons. So we're going to set up in this video specifically the rear carrying handle, and I guess we can go ahead and set up the muzzle device as well since that would only really take about two to three minutes or so. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and swap this mesh out here. So we want the SK rifle, no add-ons. And we want to start by just confirming that everything works. Make sure I'm on the correct one. So I'm on the M4. Good to go. Everything's still, you know, in the same manner. Now let's go ahead and construct our carrying handle. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and make a new folder, call it attachments. We're going to create a new actor blueprint. Call this one BP underscore tutorial carrying handle. Couldn't really think of a name. Open that on up. And we want to add a static mesh. And that mesh is going to be the carry handle. Just like so. So we're going to leave this as is for now. And let's go ahead and set that up as an attachment. So we're going to add a attachment component. And this one's going to be skg attachment underscore carrying handle. Now, you don't need to name these specifically for the attachment. So normally I would name this something like sight or optic. Just kind of indicate that, hey, right here, this is a uh, an attachment point for your sights. That's more or less what it's really intended for. So our attached to mesh name is going to be the skeletal mesh. Where it's going to attach, we're going to call this one s underscore we're going to do s underscore attach underscore site. We're going to copy that socket name. And we're going to add that socket in like so and do a preview asset of the carrying handle. So let's go ahead, orient that appropriately. And just kind of get it in the ballpark. I'm trying to line up where the lugs would go. That's close enough. Now we just need the height. So pretty much here. So that's where we're going to stick it. Go ahead and save and compile, save, yada, yada. Now we want to go ahead and make it so it spawns this as an attachment. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make a default attachment. That's going to be our carrying handle. We're not going to worry about the compatibility as of yet. That'll be its own dedicated video. So we're going to hit play. As you can see, we now have a default carry handle. So if we aim, we're still good to go. And the only reason for that is because we're using the current default S underscore aim socket, which just so happens to line itself up with the rear uh, peep sight there. That's because that's where we positioned it for the previous firearm, which had the carrying handle already built into the firearm. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and construct that. So this is now the aimable, well, part, so to speak. So on the carrying handle, we simply add the procedural anim component. And we have the socket S underscore aim. The procedural mesh name is static mesh, so that's good to go. Now we just want to give it the socket. So we're going to add a new socket, S underscore aim. And let's try to position it accordingly, if I can even grab it. Good grief. And we're going to kind of just get it ballpark close because it's going to always be tweaked. I think I had it initially. I wanted to have it a little bit high on the uh, high where it would go. Okay, so we have the socket. Go ahead and make sure we're saved. Hit play and let's aim. So now we can confirm that that actually is a correct. So we will we'll, go ahead and actually uh, make it snap and we'll just go, we'll go to the right. So we aim and there we go. So that tells us we are now aiming with the rear, uh, well, the rear carrying handle. So we're pretty much good to go in that aspect. We now have our carrying handle set up. And that literally took just a matter of minutes. And if I wasn't speaking and trying to explain, I this would be something you can do in literally probably a minute, maybe two. And that's really all that's needed 
for attachments like this. So your iron sights. Optics are a little bit more involved, but that'll be done in the next video. But it's pretty much the same concept as this to getting it aimable. And then we add some more information through the optic component. And that will be, like I said, discussed in the near future. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and set up a muzzle device. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to duplicate this attachment component and change the name to muzzle device. Go ahead and clear out the default attachment and change the attach to socket to S underscore attach muzzle. Now we want to go ahead and copy this and go to our skeleton here, add that as a socket. And kind of ballpark it in the rough area. Add a preview asset of what was it called? Yeah, that's the path. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. I didn't know if it was labeled birdcage or not. So we want to rotate that 90 degrees. Get that as close as we can. And then try to roughly center it. To me, that's pretty close. It might be a smidge low. But I'm not concerned about it. So we're going to go ahead and save everything. We know we're good to go there. Now we need to actually construct the muzzle, well, itself. So VP underscore tutorial M4 muzzle. Add a static mesh, not a sphere. And we're going to do the muzzle. rifle muzzle yeah so we're gonna add the muzzle and we want to give it the muzzle component so this is labeled static mesh s underscore muzzle and we're going to change the muzzle tag to muzzle device instead and the gameplay tags i'm going to actually clear this out so it does not have a tag by default so you can expect this to be empty but we want this to be the muzzle device indicating that it'll work its way down the chain so for example when Let's say we do not have a muzzle device for this, but we have our muzzle component, which is indicating that this is using the barrel that's built into the firearm. If we don't have a muzzle device, this will use the barrel. If we add the muzzle device, it'll say, hey, this has the tag of muzzle device, so we're going to use this muzzle component instead, and then it'll use that. And when you remove it, it'll then fall back to using the muzzle component on the firearm, which is representing the barrel itself. So that's that. So when I hit play, we, remember we have our firearm collision. So we want to make sure that that is still good to go. So we're going to have to set that up in here. So the S underscore muzzle. So let's go to our static mesh. Give it that socket, S underscore muzzle. And we want to position it right in front and make sure our rotation is good. So we need to rotate 90 degrees forwards, save it. Then in our M4 for the muzzle device, we can then make the default attachment the M4 muzzle. So we press play, and there we go. We now have our muzzle device, and confirm that everything's good to go. We should still have firearm collision, which we do not. So that indicates, hey, something's jacked up. So that's usually a rotation issue typically. So actually, this would be a good idea for me to go ahead and draw a debug line so I can show you that real quick. So let me set that up and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so while doing that I actually was able to discover a bug, so clearing out the gameplay tags here ended up making the firearm collision not functional, so I ended up fixing that as well as letting the actual visual trace kind of come about so you can see it. So that's what the red is, and you can see here we have the birdcage on the end. Now what I was kind of referencing was the socket orientation. So based upon how I rotate that around, can get a rough idea on kind of what it's doing. So basically we want it to be forward facing because the way this works is, oops, we find the muzzle transform. So that's going to be here and we know the orientation it's going to go. But what we do is we go basically in reverse. So we take this point, we trace ourselves back to where the root would be which in this case for this firearm, it's right here where that origin point is. And from there, we then use this as the starting point and trace forwards. So that's what ends up actually being used. So I really don't need the, the uh, debug line anymore, but 
anyways, so I was a little bit incorrect. The trace is set up, but that gave me an excuse to, or not, sorry, not the trace, the muzzle device with the collision is set up, but that gave me an excuse to kind of give a rundown on what could potentially be wrong with your muzzle in case that you have problems later down the road with firearm collision. So there'll probably be a video covering just, actually I already made one, a little more in-depth video at some point for firearm collision, but for now this is kind of, that's like 90% of it because really it's just you tweak the curves, you adjust the uh, scale settings, and you position a socket. That's kind of it. But anyhow, that covers our carrying handle here for the rear sight as well as our muzzle device. That kind of starts us off on the attachment journey. So in the next video, I want to go through and just kind of give a more in-depth view on the attachment components themselves. So explain the various settings and what all they do, why they're there, as well as the compatibility. So this was just kind of like a little introduction, and more in-depth will come in the next one. So I will see you then.